Hello and welcome to Commodore 128 Assembly Language Programming. Uh, we're going to continue on the farm program today and I think what we're going to do today is work on a dialog box. Um, we're going to need dialog in the game so we've got to be able to pop that up in a in a box of some sort. Um, so I think in, uh, in Stardew Valley the dialog box kind of pops up over your guy. I don't think we want to do that. I think just to keep things simple we'll just pop it up in the middle of the screen. Um, we don't have as, as much screen to work with anyway um, to be moving it around all over the place so we'll just pop it up in the middle of the screen. Um, I'm thinking if we figure the inside of the box is 40 by 6, you know, 40 characters by 6, that should be plenty of room um, for messages. We can change it later if we need to, but um, if the inside is 40 by 6 and then figure a one character border around it that'll make the that'll make it 42 by 8 and then figure to set it off from the the rest of the screen put a space around that a one border or a one character space around that that's going to bring us up to 44 by 10 so we're going to we're going to be replacing a 44 by 10 section of the screen with our dialog box and that's a pretty substantial chunk of it when you figure the whole screen is only 80, 80 by 25. Um, so this is going to be a pretty big area just kind of out in the middle of it. Um, to figure out where that starts then um, 44, if we want to just center it, let, let's, say, let's say we put it five, five lines from the top Let's start at five lines from the top, and then we want to center it left and right. So we've got 44 out of 80. That leaves 36, um, 36 total spaces not used. So 18 on each side. So we want to start on the 19th, 19th character from the left. Okay, so the 19th character from the left on the on the fifth line let's say or maybe the sixth line we'll see how it looks when we do it um, and so what we're going to want to do is just start at that point and start drawing in what we need to draw until we've got the whole box drawn um, now before we do that let's see before we do that we want to put some stuff on the screen so we can see that it's working right so um, I think we'll just fill the screen. We've already got our setup characters program that, or setup characters routine that creates the grass and water characters that I made last time. Um, so let's just fill the screen with grass and water characters. Um, to do that, let's look at our library here. So um, we're not going to try to draw anything. We'll just we'll just fill up the screen with them. So. We've got our move 80 text 0, 0 routine that we can use to move to the first location on the screen. And let me just copy a few of these things over. Reference. Okay. So let's jump to move 80 text 0, 0. That just moves to the beginning of screen RAM. And then let's load A with our grass character um, and then let's see yeah then we'll jump to write 80 byte that'll write the grass character once and then let's see repeat 80 so we'll load a then with 249 and jump to repeat 80 byte so that'll write the grass character 250 times um, then let's load A with 1, that's the water character, and do this stuff again. Okay, so that'll do, that'll do 500 characters. We need to do 2,000, so we need to do this all four times. So, let's, or let's just come up here, load Y with 4, and then we'll start a loop, decrement Y, range of not equal back up to there 
And so now we've got a four times loop that will write 2,000 characters alternating 250 grass, 250 water, 250 grass, 250 water, back and forth until the screen is full. All right, now that wrote the characters. Now we need to do the colors too. Um, we didn't really mess with this before, but since we have the routine here, we can use move 80 extra 00 to move to the beginning of attribute memory, which is where the colors are. Okay, now if we want to make the grass green and the um, and the water blue, let's just go ahead and copy this. And then instead of writing 0 and 1 for the characters, we'll write the colors. So RGB, RGB, that would be a dark green. And then for the blue, that would be a dark blue. All right, because the way these work is you have the first four bits are, I forget which ones are which, but the first one is the attribute bit that just tells it which which set of characters is coming out of. We want to leave it out of the first set, so we leave it as zero. One of these is the reverse bit. Um, one of them's underline, and one of them is flash. I probably don't have these in the right order, but it doesn't matter because I'm leaving them all turned off. And then you get red, green, blue, and intensity. Intensity just means brightness, basically. So here we have blue, blue without brightness, without intensity. If you if you turned on intensity like this, then you'd get a bright blue. This will be a dull blue or dark blue. Um, okay, so that will do our colors. So all that should give us um, all that should give us a screen of grass and water. All right, and then I want to pause there. Wait for key. Now, do I have wait for key? Let's see. I'm going to flip over here. I don't think I have wait for key in my in my code here. It's in the other the other stuff we're working on. Yeah, it's in it's in game of life. It's also in this test program. Now that's a that's kind of a crummy version of it. Now let's go back to Emacs. I should probably put wait for key in a separate. Well, that is the that's also the crummy version of it. Where's my good version of it? I thought I had a good version that was a little more. A little more understanding than this one. Um, D4. Hmm. I guess this one will work for now. It do, it works. It's just it it uh, it'll get your it'll get your key more than once because it's so fast. I know I had I know I had. I know where it is. It's in. It's in the worm game. I know it's there. Wait for a key press. Game key press. Wait for yes and no. Oh, that's why. We changed it so that it wasn't just a wait for key press. It was a wait for a key that goes on and yeah, okay. All right done with that so let's just copy this we'll use it for now add to it later if we need to all right so I just wanted to wait so that we can see what the screen looks like before it breaks out into into the monitor
All right. Let's assemble. Move ADL. Typo there. That's attribute zero zero to say go to the. That just means go to the attribute memory at zero zero on the screen, just to the first location. Okay. Okay, there's our code. Looks like it's the what I would expect it to be. Okay, so <laughs> doesn't look very good on this particular background at least, but it is there. Um, let's see. And then not waiting for my, or it's not taking my maybe it already broke out. I think it already broke out because it runs so fast that it catches my return or something like that. Um, anyway, because uh, let's see said it broke out thirteen four three yeah that's the break right before or the break right right after we call wait for keys so yeah I did it did go through wait for key. It just it's that fast. Um, okay, so I don't like the looks of my <laughs> I don't like the looks of my um, colors very well. But let's see. background color. I don't like the looks of my characters very well, but uh, I have to work on those. I'm thinking what I might do with some of these things is like for the grass, maybe instead of just having a single grass character, maybe have two of them or even three of them and then mix them up um, to get a little more variation so it doesn't look so much like just like a line of static. And the water one is, is really not good. Of course, things will look better when they actually have other things around them to give them some context, but Anyway, for right now, um, let me I need to adjust this just a little bit. Maybe I don't. I guess it's uh, I guess it's all on there. I couldn't tell if it was all on the video or not. I guess it is. Okay, so we do that. Um, let's move all that into a routine. water because we're not going to want that later we'll, we'll get rid of it later all right so after we draw grass water then we want to wait for a key and I'm gonna to have to fix that so that it because I need it to actually stop it I can't have it just go on because it's so fast oops I do. Let's 
copy delay one sec also. Alright, well, let's see. Use game key press. Um, what does this do, real quick? Now here's what we'll do call it wait for space. It'll wait for it. Wait for us to press a space character, and then after it gets a space character, then it'll wait for a blank character again, or wait for no character again, and branch back to branch if not equal back to there. So. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to load the character from the keyboard, compare it to a space, branch if not equal back to get another one, so then once it does get a space, it'll go on through and then start loading the character from the keyboard and comparing to nothing, the, the, the return value that means nothing being pressed, it'll branch back up until nothing is being pressed. Okay, so that'll take care of the problem with it getting 100 spaces all at once because it's that fast. Um, Alright, let's try this again. I didn't want to spend the, quite this much time on just the character, or just that, but... Okay, so that... Okay, why is it... Maybe I've got the wrong care the wrong character for the space. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm not gonna spend a bunch of time on that because I'll come back to it when and figure it out later when I'm not wasting your time. Let's just uh, all right. We'll just leave that out for now because we're going to draw our dialog box, and that's what really matters. So. So we'll have an open dialog and we'll have a closed dialog, but we won't use closed dialog yet. Um, okay, so closed dialog right now will just be a return. Um, so open dialog is going to actually draw the dialog box, draw space inside it, then close dialog will need to put back what was there before. That'll actually be the more interesting part. But first we've got to get open dialog working to do its part. So let's see, go to notes here. I said we want to start at five lines from the top, 19th character from the left. So you think about where you are then, five lines from the top, 19 from the left, so we can use our position 80xy routine. 
to get started at the right position and so we have to put X and Y in screen memory so or we have to put we have to put the we have to put the coordinates in registers X and Y so we're going to load X with um, I guess it'd be 19 although well the first the first one is zero so I guess it'd be 18 um, and we'll load Y with 5 that'll start us on line 5 which is actually be the sixth line and we'll jump and so that'll position the pointer now we want to start writing characters so remember we're going to write just a, an empty space around a, a one character border space border around our dialog box so across the top then we need let's see I said it's going to be 44 so we need 44 spaces so we got to load A with 20, with 20 in hex that's the space let's check that just to be sure I might have that might have been why my wait for key thing wasn't working I think I was using the the screen code for space and not the key code for space. I bet that's I bet that was the problem. I don't, this one doesn't have the key codes. Anyway, I don't want to get distracted on that again. So the screen code for space, yes, is is 20 in hex. Okay, so we want to write 44 of those. And so the first thing we do is jump to write. Um, well, let's let's look first in our repeat the last byte. Okay, so we can use that. Or what else could we use? It's been a little while since I wrote these, so I have to stop and think about what I, what options we have here. But I guess that's the one. Um, now we could have used print a character, but the thing is, once we get positioned, it's going to be easier to just forget about the coordinates and just work our way through um, the work our way across the screen so I think we'll stick with position 80 X Y and um, repeat and so on okay so we'll write a space and then we want to write 43 more spaces Okay. Um, and that then is filled in our first line of 44 spaces. Now we want to go to the next line. So we can load X with 18 again, load Y with 6 for the next line, and jump subroutine, position 80XY. The other option, the, the other way to do that instead of calling that because that does have to do a little math but the other way to do it would be to ask the chip okay where are we now and then add enough spaces to it to bring it around to the next you know to the right position the next line I think this is probably just as fast um, because that would require more talking to the chip you'd have to read those values from the chip do some addition on them and write them back um, I think this is probably just as well so Let's go back up here and say what we did. Write 44 spaces. Okay, now here we're going to write one space. Okay, then we're going to write a border, or then we want to write the, the top left corner border character. So if we look in the book at the ask or at the screen codes here. I think the one we want is, well, where is it? Ah, here it is. 85 is a top left curved border character. We could use either either the curved one is 85 or the square one is 112. I'll, I'll just use the curved one for now to see how that looks. We could also go with these solid thicker ones. We'll, you know, we can experiment with that stuff later. So I'll go with 85 for now. Um, I'm kind of switching back and forth here sometimes between hex and decimal. Hopefully that won't cause problems. Um, so we'll jump to subroutine. Or let's see, we'll, we didn't write a space yet. Let me back up. 
we jump to the position, but we haven't written a space yet. So first we got to write it, write a space. Okay, and then write that upper left border curved character. Okay, and then to continue on across the border, we want just a flat top border piece. That's 64. And we're going to want how many of those? If we look back at our notes here, 40. There's going to be 40 of those because by the time you take out the outer empty space border and then this border, there's going to be 40 of those. So we've already written one. Now we have to tell it to repeat that 39 times. So we'll call repeat 80 byte. Then we need to write the right top border character, which is 73. And then we need to write a space after the after the border is over. Okay. So that would be the top border. Okay. Now if that seems like a lot of stuff going on, it is kind of a lot of stuff going on. And again, that goes back to you know what we've talked about where it it does take some doing to write to this this screen because you do have to do you're not writing directly to memory locations, you're talking to this chip and saying, okay, put a byte here for me, put a byte here for me, you know, and so on. But, but the fact that it has this repeating ability also means when we want to repeat this 39 times, we don't have to actually write a loop that does it 39 times. We just say, do it, and it does it. And it does it at, 30, at 16 megahertz, if I remember right, so it does it pretty fast. Okay, so that's our top, our top border now drop down one then on the next line so we'll, we'll go to the next line so we're still we're always starting at 18 and now we're going to be on line 7 and position that we're going to write a space like we like we've been doing each time Now we've got to write the left side border, which is just a straight up and down center piece. That's 93. Now we want to write 40 spaces. And so if we come up here, just to save some typing, grab write a space and then repeat it 39 more times and then write the border the right border character will be the same as the left border character it's just a straight up and down piece and then a single space okay all right so that's a center line of the dialog box now I said we want the dialog box, the interior of the dialog box, to be six lines. We need to do that six times. Um, rather than repeat that six times, let's do this. Let's increment y, compare y to. Let's see. We wanted to do then. We wanted it. To, we did it on seven, so we wanted to do it on seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve not do it on 13. So compare y to 13 and branch if not equal back up to here which will be there. Okay, so we've just made a loop that will loop on y and I'm pretty, well, shoot. If I'm, before I do that I need to make sure none of these other, none of these routines that we use clobber y. I don't think they do. But let's check. 
Um, position. That's probably something I should have in my. Actually, position x, y is going to clobber y. Okay, but do any of the others. Repeat 80 byte doesn't use y. Write 80 byte doesn't. Okay. Okay, so this is position 80 x, y is going to clobber y. So what I'll have to do is after we call it load y with 7 again and then start the loop here. Now wait a second, that's not going to work either. Because we're positioning it each time. Shoot. Okay. Um, uh, we're just going to have to use a memory location. I'm not, I shouldn't spend a lot of time thinking about it. Um, Because we just we don't have another register available, so let's put a let's put a zone around this thing so that I can use a local label. And down here, then at the end of the zone, we'll put um, D line for dialog line byte zero or let's. I guess just zero will be good. Okay. I guess if I put a colon after that, it shows up better as a label. Um, okay, so load y with seven. Uh, store that into d into d line, and then. Now, hold on, I'm just being stupid. Um, we want this to happen six times. Okay, so D line is now going to be six. No, I know I'm making this harder than I need to. Basically because of the fact that Y keeps getting clobbered. Um, okay, there's there's where our loop needs to start. Load Y with D line. Okay, so out here then, load Y with seven store y into d line yeah and then load y from d line down here then after we've you know, after we're done clobbering it, we need to get it back, increment it, and then compare it and branch if it's not 13 yet. So the first time it'll come through It'll set D line to seven, Y will be seven. I don't 
need to load it here because it's already it's already going to get loaded down there so that it can be incremented and cop and compared. So Oh, I know what I'm forgetting. What I'm missing. I need to increment D line and then load Y from it. So the D line keeps getting incremented each time. Otherwise, Y won't get incremented each time because I got to remember that Y is getting clobbered here. So, okay, I think that's right. Read from line seven to line twelve. All right. Let's move on. We'll come back to that if it's not right. So now we're down to the bottom line of the bio, of the the bottom border. So the bottom border should be a lot like the top border right here. And so let's just grab that. Except it's going to start on line thirteen. And let's say bottom border. It's going to start on line 13, and then instead of the upper corners, it's going to have the lower corners. So back to the book, the lower corner on the left will be 74, and the one on the right will be 75. else there should be the same. And now we just want a line of spaces along the bottom, so that'll be just like this right this business up here. Just repeated. Except now we're down to line 14. Okay. So that should fill in a dialog box hopefully right in the middle of the screen. Okay. Something tells me it's not going to work that perfectly right off the bat. Uh, label name not in leftmost column. Line 97. What am I? Oh, I gotta say bang bite. There we go. Alright, so when we run this, it should fill in the screen with grass and water and then put the dialog box in. There's not going to be any delaying. Um, or will there? Let's see. Well, yeah, there's this break here. Let's go and get one of these programs. I did have a delay. second okay just to give us a second to see how things look before everything breaks out and goes wonky okay so go back up here Five seconds, even better. Uh, assemble again, load again. All right, now we'll run. So it should put the grass and water on the screen, draw the dialog box in, and then wait five seconds. Okay. Um, I guess it's going to wait for good. Um, all right. I, I would say that's what we want. Um, we've got the box. Maybe I can make this a little bigger. 
we've got the box. As far as the as far as the characters, we'll deal with the colors in a second here. But as far as the characters go, we've drawn in the box with spaces around it and spaces inside it. Okay, so now the next thing we have to do is what about the colors? Because we want to, you know, we want our dialog box to be consistent. So for now, maybe we'll put it. I don't know. I guess we can just put white on black or black on white or whatever. Just something to set it apart so we can tell that the color is being done. Um, okay. So to do that, we have to move to the beginning or to the same, basically to the same position in attribute memory. And so right here, just instead of position 80xy, we do position atra 80xy. So We'll copy this down to the bottom here. Position Atra ADXY. That was, yeah. Okay, so that's our starting point. And we're going to write, we want to write something in there to represent the foreground color. So. And I just remember, we can't change the background color. The background color is the same for the whole screen. We're just changing the foreground color. Um, and in fact, we don't need to change it for the spaces on the top and bottom because they're, they're going to be spaces anyway. They're not going to change. So we can go ahead and drop down to line 6. Um, jump to that location. Um, and then just put in 44 let's say black so to load A with 0 is going to be black write 80 byte and then load with 43 to repeat repeat 80 byte okay so that'll do one line now we want to do that for the six lines inside plus the six lines of the border, or six lines inside plus the top border and the bottom border. We want to do that for eight total lines. So we're going to need, we're going to, need to do the D line thing again, where we start out with, let's see, yeah, load Y with six, store that into D line. And then start our loop. And then after the loop, we need to get D line back. Or let's see how we do that for increment D line, load Y with D line, compare Y to, let's see, the bottom line is going to be. 13, so the next line after that will be 14. Branch of not equal back up to there. Is that how I did it before? Yeah, except that we were stopping one, one spot earlier. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're looping eight times from 6 to 13 and writing 44 zeros into attribute memory each time and zero is going to give us black for our foreground color. Okay. So let's see how that does. That time it broke. It broke at 1320. Okay, well, it means it got through the it got through the um, jump subroutines. Well, let's um let's reset. I need to put this in my program somewhere, I guess, to to switch over. But anyway, all right, let's do that again. Oh, 
Okay, what are we not doing here? What am I getting wrong? I just added a little bit of stuff and all of a sudden nothing's happening. Well, it's, st it's still changing the characters, but it's not doing the other stuff. What's going on here? All I did was I added this part. Right. Calls open dialogue, close dialogue, and then it should de delay. put that back so that it doesn't do the stuff I just added and see if that fixes it. I don't really see how what I just added would be the problem. Yet it is. Hmm. My one second delays also don't seem to be one second delays. I'll have to see what the deal is with that. But um. Okay, so for some reason, this bit of code right here is a problem. All right, load Y with six, store Y into D line, that's fine. Load X with 18, position it, position at tray 80 X, Y with 18 and 6, then load A with 0 and write that, load A with 43 and repeat it, oh, LSR, not JSR, and that's not a mis I mean, it's a mistake, but it's not a syntax error, good grief, all right, this is why I wish I could be doing this on a stream, Somebody to speak up and say, hey, dummy, it's LSR. All right. There's our black dialogue, or our black dialogue box border. And I don't know, you know, we may want to make the border one color and make the dialogue letters another color. That's okay. We'll, we'll see about that when the time comes. Um, but I wanted to at least get the get the dialog box placed. Um, now the next part, which I guess I won't tackle now because we're almost in an hour, but the next part, kind of the more interesting part, is going to be closed dialog because closed dialog is going to need to get back what was there before, which means open dialog is going to need to save what was there. What we're going to do is take that section of the screen and copy it to another location excuse me copy it to another location in video ram because we do have some extra space in video ram that we can use and i think it'll be enough so we're going to have to say for these 10 lines copy that chunk of the line to this other place in memory and using the 80 column chips block copy routine and also do that in attribute memory because we've got to copy the colors too so we can bring the colors back so we've got to copy the 10 lines out of video ram out of you know out of screen ram and also the 10 lines out of, out of attribute ram to another location and then close dialog can bring those back to where they belong um, when it's done so that'll be the thing for next time 
um, which I don't think will take too long, but I think it will take close to an hour, so I don't want to make this one get that long. So that will be the plan for next time, and I hope this one was fun, and I thank you for watching.